All right. So for today's episode, we're going to be talking about discipline. Okay. All right. So, Zach, do you remember the first time or the most prominent story of growing up and getting disciplined? Yeah. So I remember when my I got in trouble at school for something stupid. I don't know. You're a bad kid? <laughs> no, I wasn't a bad kid. It was just, just something really stupid. Um, you know, just being young and naive, that's how things roll. But I remember when I came home and my dad gave me a phone call and he was like, when I get home, you're like, you're going to get a whooping today. <laughs> as soon as I get home, first thing, you get a whooping. I think everybody can relate to that. I think that's a, that's a, that's a lost art. You, <laughs> you said you got a phone call at school. I was thinking, what? No. Like, like I mean, that too. Like, I don't know if they do that still. No, they don't do that. But I mean, I would get home and, you know, we didn't have cell phones back in the day. Yeah. We had to, we so you, you actually literally had to call up to the school mm-hmm. and then they had, you had to sit down and, you know, get on the phone, mm-hmm. the school phone and, and talk to your parents. So. So, yeah, so when I got home, of course, as any kid will be scared out of their minds because I knew I was going to get a whooping. So I decided to do, you know, two things you can either do. A, you can go to sleep and fake it and hopefully <laughs> they'll forget when they get home because <laughs> you don't want to get that whooping. Yeah. Or two, if it's if if you know they're getting off in 30 to 30 minutes to an hour you wanted to hide or something or you want like, so what I would usually do is either I like, like either one, just so you're a runner. <laughs> I was a runner. So I would like either hide, uh, either in the closet, uh, or hide in the bathtub with the curtains halfway open, you know, so it could look like I'm not there, <laughs> but <laughs> eventually I was going to get that whoop in regardless. Yeah, but so there's no avoiding it. There was no way of avoiding it. So, I mean, that was just my way of, uh, of life whenever I was growing up is, you know, um, just receiving. I don't think I avoided any, any whoopings, any spankings. Like really? my parents didn't play. It's kind of like you already knew it was coming. Uh, especially in childhood. There's, I don't, I can't fathom a way to avoid it. Running away type thing. I know some people have had the opportunity. It's like, all right, you know, go get the belt and then go like run away type thing. No, oh, <laughs> it's like you got the belt. It's coming. If you if you tried to run away, where are you gonna run to? Exactly. It's like, oh no, I'm a I'm a <laughs> I'm gonna run off to my friend's house across yeah. the street and hopefully. Or I don't mean, find I don't know me. if your parents were throwers. Like <laughs> No, no, my parents weren't throwers. I whatever's think, close enough, they're gonna throw at you. Yeah. See, the only thing they threw at me was just their, their hands. Like I mean not like like fists or anything. Don't no, hands with your parents? No, no. I think <laughs> squaring up. But the thing about it for me was I think the thing I hated the most growing up is uh whenever my parents would ask my sister, Hey, go pick up a belt from the closet, you know? And, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh gosh. And me being stupid, I was like, Yeah, get like the thinnest one you can find. You know, because that'd be less pain. I mean, at least the belt <laughs> versus the switch. I know I never experienced a switch thing, but that was a very real thing for some other people. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, the belt was just as bad. The belt, the hand, whatever is close enough, mm-hmm. um, extension cords. All of it. All of that. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, that's getting us deeper into this this discipline topic. Exactly. Because it gets, it gets pretty deep. Yeah. I mean, because what? Whoopings have been associated with like black folks. For a really long time. A really long time. A really, since slavery. Since slavery. <laughs> you want to be frank about Actually, it. Actually, probably before slavery, to be honest <laughs> with you. But I mean, regardless, the most prominent one is probably slavery. So we kind of associate whoopings with that in our own culture. Did um, we grow up as slaves? Hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question. But I will say that we were disciplined to be, uh, or conditioned to be, uh, you know, Obviously, just to be better at, at who we are, yeah. like, go, like go above and beyond other, you know, other races. And, you know, we like obviously we are two black dads and we have to be better than what the stigma or, or stereotype that is placed upon us. So yeah. as parents, of course, you know, you, they, they, they will resort to whoopings because that's just, you know, that was just their tactic of discipline. So. I think for us, for us specifically, definitely with us being um no sons of of immigrant fathers yeah um trying to understand the why behind the discipline is is very complex at times because i don't know my father didn't explain too much (laughs) there wasn't much for him to talk about yeah you got in trouble you got to get whooped exactly and he didn't feel the need to explain it but i mean in later years i understand just like you're saying the need to kind of push us and condition us that 
we have to do things better. We we have um, less excuses in this world that we always have to be be disciplined. Mm-hmm. Um, not just with the physical aspect, but just be disciplined in our lifestyles in order for yeah. us to really be successful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just overall, I think that kind of affected us in a very negative, I mean, in some negative aspects. I think but it's also, negative during childhood. It's negative during childhood. I don't know anyone who just has that, who truly got physically disciplined and was like, yeah. all right, no, this made me for the, for the best while I was growing up. Everybody hates it. Yeah, I mean, I, sh- I still hate it to this day. I mean, as a parent, yeah, we resort to it once or twice, but I don't think it should be like the main thing. But we'll get into that. Yeah, I think we're gonna on. have a lot of good discussions of yeah. just opening up the realm to the different possibilities of uh, when it comes to child discipline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I think like uh, you know, growing up, of course, you have friends who are disciplined differently. You know, so uh, you know, I had a whole lot of you know, uh, what happens in this house? Stays what happens in this, in this house? house stays in this house, kind of thing. <laughs> but I just I did just didn't like it whenever you know, like for instance, like my my white friends, they would always like when they got in trouble, they didn't get whoopings. They would get grounded. Yeah. And I'm I, like, I never have experienced this grounding. I've never experienced that either. But I mean, no, no, I've never experienced that either. I've I always wish to get grounded because I'm like, <laughs> I'd rather be grounded for a week than get a whooping, like, you know, get like five or ten lashes on, you know, across yeah. my back. You know. <laughs> Lashings. Hey, lashes. That's what they call it. Like <laughs> 50 lashes for you like you know like, I'm like what are we in the old like in the old testament like, i don't think we've ever recovered from this we never have we'll talk about that later mm-hmm. on but um yeah i just like i just i was like your parents ground you i mean i mean it's just a common thing or your or, parents talk to you or your parents gave you that certain talk <laughs> yeah. like now look billy i need you to stop doing this <laughs> that is not right you know you can do better like you know i was just like come on now but other people would also get like and this is this is you know it's it's kind of common too like capital punishment like you know like like for my mom for instance uh whenever she got in trouble back in the philippines she would have like two books like you know a set of books on both hands yeah and like if you or if if it wasn't books then it was like a bowl of water oh right so if and you had to do like the electric chair or you have to stand up. I know. And I was just like, dang mom. And she's like, yeah, even if, and if you dropped like one drop of water, you were hit with like a bamboo stick or something like on the back. And then you would get more time to hold that water in place. So it's just, I'm like, man, y'all are like taking it back to like the, torture chambers yeah. like just torturing your kid <laughs> on this whole discipline i understand ordeal. like corporal punishment like yeah to a lesser degree but i mean they both can go pretty extreme yeah um but i mean yeah i mean that kind of ties into what we're getting into as far as like generational mm-hmm. curses or generational mm-hmm. cycles of like all right our parents um being minorities have gone through a lot of different things in their upbringings yeah, yeah. and that's been passed down and passed down to us that we our, our forms of discipline are very extreme at times. Right. And it's not necessarily necessary, but it all, some, for some reason, we see a good in there. Yeah. So now as both of us, as parents, we have to make these, these decisions to say, do we continue doing what we, how we were raised or do we try to be more uh, progressive with it? Yeah. And that is, that's a real challenge. Like is, I, yeah. we still, I know I got a little trauma. <laughs> Uh, I think both of us have plenty of trauma to go around. Yeah, I mean, it's not even a little for me. You know, I had plenty of trauma on that. I mean, it it affects, you know, our mental health. Mm-hmm. You know, as as you know, we go through a lot enough already as black people. You know, and being treated by our own kind in that form or fashion can take a huge toll uh, negatively on our perspective on on life. You know, so not saying that it would diminish me or like put me in a state of depression, but but it is a possibility. But it is a possibility because you know some parents go way beyond the mark of a punishment, then becomes abuse. Yes. You know, so I just um, one of the things my parents always like to point out is that they feel like uh, our generation is like a lot weaker, a lot more like emotional to it. So, yeah. I mean, that being said, you got to realize you can't do a lot of things that you did. That were done to you in the 60s and 70s and the things that you did to us in the 90s. Like, yeah. you can't continue that cycle if you realize that there's an inequality against us. Yeah. 
I, I, I don't I don't accept that uh, that phrase of that we are weaker than them. You know, I think that's just that's just uh, I don't know, dog. They went through a lot. <laughs> they do. They did go through a lot. I'll give them that, but that shouldn't give them the excuse that you know that oh you're you're weaker than us. Like you're the I weakest generation. I don't generation, necessarily take it weaker. I know I'm more privileged than them. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then I mean that's built off the backs of them and and my grandparents. Like yeah. we've we've uh, acclimated to a certain point that yes, I don't have to deal with a lot of things that you deal with and a lot of things that you dealt with. I don't know how I would handle. Yeah, like like I said, I give them a lot of credit, not necessarily my parents, but more like grandparents and stuff. Like civil rights was huge. Yeah, <laughs> and like I said, we kind of laughed about slavery, but I mean that's that's what it's all deriving from essentially, yeah. and it's just been passed down and passed down. So yeah. now at the point, no, at in 2019, I don't feel like I'm as equipped yeah. and have to go through that harsh discipline on myself in order to get to where they they got to. Yeah. So not, since we're on that note, uh, what is your whole thoughts on, or how would you handle? this type of situation now that you're a parent like how do you go about doing that so i do kind of follow that narrative too of like a generation each generation is kind of getting more and more privileged so my daughter doesn't have to deal with like half of the issues of like growing up and uh feeling underprivileged i think like i work hard and i make sure everything's taken care of for her so when it comes down to disciplinary actions um I don't feel the need or the the aggression to kind of push as hard as my parents did to like make sure she's going to be fine. Like she's been giving a lot of resources just growing up that Alexia is, is smart enough to know right from wrong to make those good decisions mm-hmm. and to avoid any type of conflicts. Not saying that I wasn't smart enough, but I mean, I guess I was more rebellious. Alexia's not necessarily a rebellious child. And then I know a lot of people who, like kids are more curious than rebellion. Yeah. And it's more progressive and more civil mindset now to, to have these genuine conversations. Yeah. Especially with a lot of them having access to the internet. Yeah. Like if they're not going to get to have these conversations with you or get this information from you, there there's another mm-hmm. Avenue. So you want to build that trust. That's a whole nother thing. I don't yep. know if I necessarily had, had to build trust with my parents. Like they were my sole providers and yeah. that's just kind of, it is what it is. Um, you, I feel like with our children, we have to build a solid level of trust or, um, they have access to the internet. They have access to, to CPS, 911, all these type of things. Yeah. And ultimately things to come back in a, in a negative light on us. If we were to pursue it in a more physical rationale, like we grew up. Yeah. Cause the moment we get all physical and we'll talk about, you know, discipline in public, but I think, uh, the moment we go into that phase of like we're going to spank you and we have to get a little physical yeah to show that you know that we have to you know that we have to correct this behavior in some form or fashion then kids can automatically just piggybacking off what you said kids can automatically just record it yeah you know, put like it on social crazy. media and then it becomes like the viral thing of mm-hmm. like you it, go you know, viral for, yeah. for disciplining your child exactly exactly and i just i you know i just find that so now we have to as parents have to change how do we discipline our kids without trying to resort to that yeah we have to be adaptive with it because i mean i know if i try to do anything similar to what my parents did um and like it just alexia just had to go to school the next day if she was distraught like her her teachers are inquiring her Mm -hmm. principal's inquiring now they're they're questioning me everyone feels a lot more entitled because information is spread a lot quicker now yeah so I think uh, when it comes to for me when I when I'm parenting and I'm trying to discipline my child, granted my child is only two years old, so I mean this is the time. I mean I'm like yeah, this is the time. She you know she may be taking in some things, but regardless, like the earlier the better that you can discipline your child. And what, is, what do you think is the appropriate age to to start? As soon as possible, honestly. Like how? <laughs> I mean I think like I mean no seriously, it's just like um, even when she comes out the womb, I'm like still. I mean I can't like. I can't like hit her, but the moment she can, or the moment they can like be conscious of things or they're talking or whatever, right? At least just address them and like, hey, like don't do that, stop doing that, you know? Or hey, that's that's actually correct, like you know, keep doing that, that's perfectly fine, you know? So, um, but as parents, you know, and and we should always set and reinforce the house rules Mm -hmm. you know as parents we should always put that like i think as parents you should imagine like okay what do i want my kid 
to be like in 18 years, you know, yeah. or whenever they hit 18 or whenever they hit whatever I mean, age, adulthood, adulthood like whatever they to, yeah, yeah, like whenever they hit maturity, what do you want them to be like? Right. And so you would imagine like, okay, so in order for me, to, for them to get this, you know, you have to do this, this, and this, and this, this, right. So, um, the moment you set that, you'd be good. I mean, so you have to be proactive as parents. You have to address it. You have to talk about it. You know, um, children will test you from day one. Definitely. You know, every <laughs> single in, day. in the nature. It's in the nature. Every, I mean, and even adults, we test each other. I mean, I think that's the, the that's, childish part of it is just the, <laughs> the inner child is ready to, to for bell or, you know, just yeah. be, it's, it's really just exploration, yeah. curiosity. Yeah, because. How far can I get? Yeah, because here's the thing is that we do have parents out there who act like children, yeah. you know, like they want to be friends with their child, you know, like, Oh, now you're going there. Oh, I'm going there. You mm -hmm. know? So it's just, I mean, but there's a thin line between being a friend with them and being a parent with them. You yeah. Know? So, so like when I was talking about like building trust with them, mm -hmm. that is that, that area where things get kind of hazy. Yes. Yeah. You build trust, but you also, you build trust, uh, stating yourself as the adult in exactly. the situation. And that's what I was going to say. Like, you know, the moment you build that trust and you establish the fact that you are the parent, and not a friend yeah then we can proceed on but if we still have difficulties trying to figure out which role is which then we have a problem that's where a lot of things do go yeah. left when yeah. when parents decide to hey i want to be friends i it's more important for me to maintain this relationship versus to to discipline and structure like you said have mm -hmm. that end goal of who i want this child to be as an adult mm -hmm. whenever they they blur that line and say i'd rather have this relationship more then the child has no other understanding than I know my parent wants this relationship because children are very receptive. Yeah. My parent wants this relationship more than they're willing to lose for me. Yeah. Uh, one thing I feel like we didn't necessarily do is uh, when we define discipline, um, essentially it's, it's very close to like conditioning, but do you feel like discipline automatically requires punishment or can you have discipline without punishment? Um, well, I think you can have discipline. Well, it depends. Okay. <laughs> now we're going into <laughs> another realm. Um, so uh, I'm just going to grab something. So as a teacher, right, there are different ways of handling. So like as a teacher, there's, there's this thing called classroom management where you have to manage your students, yeah. you know, and of course that comes with some form of discipline and you have to set the tone and so on and so forth. So there's not exactly where you like, I have to resort to whooping. So, I mm -hmm. mean, like, you know, I use In certain situations you can't, certain or, situations you can't. Yeah, for your yeah, profession. Yeah. So for my profession, but I like to relate my profession to my parenting because in some form or fashion, actually they are similar when it comes to discipline. You know, I went to seminar where there was a black guy who was talking about how to manage your kids in relation to managing his own kids. Mm -hmm. He was saying like he out of, you know, he has kids between seven and 22, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he was saying like, um, out of all those times that they're growing up, you know, um, especially for the 22 year old, they don't, she, he only spanked that 22 year old like one time or two yeah. times, something like that. Still felt it was necessary at one point. Yeah. I mean, I felt it was necessary at one point. He, I mean, that might be a little, I mean, but, I, I didn't want to take away from your point, but yeah. still I wanted, as we continue to progress with the conversation, I do want that to be very, um, known that even though we do feel differently about a spanking or whooping type thing, it yeah. is uh, almost necessary at one point. Yeah. Just to kind of show that, it just hey, depends this, on this the behavior. Real. Yeah, it's real. I mean, it's, it's just uh, it just depends on the on the on the on the act that the child has done. Mm. So if um, so if the child has done something really extreme, then of course go ahead whoop your child, right? <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is you you, ha you can't just like like you said, you said your dad would just whoop you right yeah, no, no questions anything. asked and you're like what am i getting a spanking for yeah. like why am i you know why am i being beaten for something that i don't know about <laughs> you know so it, it's good to at least address like this is what you did wrong and this is how you need to correct it okay you know so, so kind of like establishing a procedure yeah establishing a procedure so um so my thing is uh yeah so establish the procedure you could have it to where, like, even if your kid is acting up and you can have, like, a private conversation, you know, about, like, hey, so I've noticed that you were doing this wrong, right? And you can be, like, instead of, 
I mean, this is kind of out there because I'm so a this teacher. Is, I was like, this is, seems like more workforce. Uh, I know, I know, than but, but parenting. But, but hear me out, though. It's very out civil. Though. I would, say, yeah, it's very civil. But I'm just saying, like, and, and I'm I'm about to get to my point in just a little bit. You can have it to where the kid can say, like, okay, how can we how can we correct this behavior? Right? You don't give the you don't give the solution. You let the kid give you that solution, mm-hmm. right? And then when the kid gives you, they can either, either they actually give you something or they say, I don't know. Right. And then you keep pressing that envelope, like, okay, how can we do this? I know you did that. And then you can walk them through like, okay, here's what, you know. And so once we come to a, some type of solution where the kid gives you the answer, then you can go, all right, now that you got that, we're going to go ahead and do that. All right. And then what are the consequences if you happen to do it again. Yeah. So you put, so all it is is accountability on the kid. That's yeah. it. No, I you mean, know? that's so, good. That's a very, like I said, we're yeah. talking about different methods. Yeah. Other than the, the physicality part. Yes. Yeah. Accountability I mean, is, is a strong part of discipline. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, the, granted, this is not going to work for, uh, for every child, for yeah. every single child. This is just based off of me being a teacher and what I've been taught, you know? So, you know, and then once when they address the, the solution and, uh, and then address the, a consequence, then you would have them, well, you don't have to go this far, but as a teacher, like you would have them sign like a, like a contract mm-hmm. or an agreement saying, Hey, I'm going to do this. If I don't do this and follow through, then I'm going to like, here are my consequences, sign it off, date it. And that's, that's Definitely. it. I mean, yeah. that's teaching them life skills. I mean, that's teaching like, life skills. That's so how are, you work through problems. Yeah. Because if we don't discipline them, then, you know, then there's no rules. There's no rules. <laughs> and then you would have some kids like anarchy, anarchy, <laughs> because, OK, I've been in a meeting with a parent who treats their kid like a child. And, mm-hmm. you know, like no joke, their child would tell them what they are going to do that day. Oh, so, sorry. In reverse. So you yeah. had a, a child who taught their who defines who defies their their the, parent okay and says like like for instance like they be like mom dad i'm going out to the store i'll be back in 15 minutes at nine o'clock at night on a school night you know yeah that's yeah, that's tough that's real tough and i'm like like when i heard that i was like what if my dad if i told my dad that i'm leaving the house at nine o'clock on a school night to go to the store and i'm walking to the store or driving to the store at that time like he wouldn't think twice about so how he disciplined. So why do you think that is? Why why is that why is that not okay? Because, for one, I mean, well, for one, it's just you're a child. You don't know what's out there. You you don't you can't like your 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 mind has not developed to that point mm-hmm. where you can make brass decisions like that. Where you can just go on and say, all right, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Even though I am 13 or 14 years old, I have the right to say what I want to say. You know, but you're not at that stage yet. You know, you've never had to pay a bill in your life. You've never had to deal with true struggles, you know, where you actually had consequences that were forced upon you because of your actions. Right. So so by doing that, that. That is a very small smidge factor that won't, that would, you know, result in you being in a deeper hole than you are now. You know, I mean, this is just, I'm just saying. No, I mean, I I just wanted to pick the, pick the brain about that essentially see, I know off top based off of just our upbringing, it's like, that's just a a huge red flag or just a a flare up that a child would be able to declare themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, like I said, with us being progressive and understanding, like we both have you no know, smart daughters. They're going to get to a point where if we're continuously pushing them forward and pushing mm-hmm. them to be more independent. There's, there's a respect level. I think that's the yeah the changing factor in that. If it's yeah. respectful <clears throat> and there's an understanding that, you know, we there's rules in place and there will be consequences for your actions. Mm-hmm. Like then I think there there is a place, a time and place for that where a child can say, hey, you know. This is under your rules and regulations. If this is okay, mm-hmm. this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And <clears throat> this is different. And it goes back to like explaining your role as well. Like in our previous episode, like you have to establish your mark. Like you have to establish that you are the parent. Yeah. Because I mean, there's, there's, some, there's a difference between asking <clears throat> and telling. Yeah. Yeah. Because if, <laughs> if your kid does that, 
then like I said, you have a problem and you have not established the fact that you're a father, yeah. you know, or a parent in this case. And you're just letting your kid run all over you because either A, you're afraid to discipline your child and you just want to just let them like, oh, they'll figure it out on their own because that's your excuse for everything. Like, oh, they'll figure it out. The Like whatever he gets to the real world, he's going to figure it out or she's going to figure it out. No, like <laughs> that's totally wrong. And you won't get far with that. But they might get far, but I mean, I think it does. It causes a lot of chaos when, when we are interacting with these different people and we have relationships with people, you can tell who's been disciplined at home and who hasn't been disciplined. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, And we call it home training essentially, but still you, it it shows in, in people's thoughts and decisions of, did you really think that through no one's ever checked you like that before? Um, and you've never seen the the dark side of a consequence, or I had the fear of it. Yeah, fear is something I want to talk about too. Yeah, and, let's talk about it real quick. Um, I think when it comes down to discipline, I mean that was there's the physicality part of it, but I think it's more the fear, yeah. the notion of fear that if um if I don't do this right, um something is going to happen. Yeah, and that's what ultimately develops into like a mental health type of thing. It's like I'm always afraid of what <laughs> happens if I don't get something right. Yeah. Um, that pressure continues to build because this, this uh, the fear of being disciplined or the fear of consequences. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite songs is uh, Kendrick Lamar, Fear. Like when yeah, he's talking too. about just the the repetitive nature of of black households of the always like you better do this, you better do this, or else, or yeah. else, or mm-hmm. else, and that just continues to push forward into your mindset of like, like I said, if I the fear of of, of failure. Or the fear of being inadequate because you you can't accomplish what your parents have set up for you, or you know you you don't fall in line with your parents' discipline, so you're always being consequent, always giving consequences. Yeah. So that's a real thing. That's no moving forward. That's something I want to avoid with like with my daughter. Yeah. Because growing up for me, it's kind of like, it was always like, like I said, the fear of always getting in trouble, of always losing something, or always mm-hmm. just being under under punishment. It, it weighs heavy on you yeah. to where sometimes you don't want to do anything. And I got to the point where spankings didn't even bother me at this point. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you at a certain point, as you continue to grow <laughs> older, not mm-hmm. saying like my father or my parents can like overpower me. It's just like, yeah. it was more of a repetitive nature. Yeah. Like, all right, you do this, you're going to get, con- going to get consequences for it. But is, am I learning how to change the action? There was no, there's no up, um, no rebuilding. Mm-hmm. Now, discipline over time essentially is breaking it down. I attribute that a lot to this military mindset. Like military yeah. mindsets, all right, we're going to break you down from whatever you were before, and then we're going to build you up into what you want to be. Yeah. But that building up part is crucial when it comes to discipline. Discipline yeah. over time will continuously beat somebody down or berate them down. Okay. But if you don't build them up, like we said, into who we want them to be, then they end up in this eternal feeling of like, all right, it's. it's I'm just going to continue being the cycle of always being disappointed, always being seeing the consequences of my action. That's not something I want for, for Alexia or for anybody else. Same like uh-huh. I want you to see that hope and that glimmer. Like, okay, I just like you did with like an action plan. Essentially, like if I repair these actions, I can see a better success. Yeah. And <clears throat> just piggybacking off of that. Um, I definitely agree with all that. I think uh, to add on top of that, it's good to kind of have like some type of reward system. Now I know mm-hmm. that sounds kind of weird, you know, like why would you want to? Re- re- it only sounds weird to us. I'm yeah, like- I know it sounds weird, but like I said, this is just based off of what I learned from teaching. So, um, <clears throat> you know, so you have positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, and negative punishment. So, anytime when I say positive, I'm talking about you're adding something into the mix, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> Whenever I'm saying negative, I'm saying taking away something from the mix. So. For instance, like if you do something correct, like you do the right behavior, you, you know, I, you know, and you do something right, then I would like, that's positive, like, you know, positive reinforcement. I am, I would give you like a cookie for the correct behavior. Right now, negative reinforcement is like, let's say for instance, like, I mean, everybody, you know, we all have cars and, you know, all the fine tech stuff, but whenever we have to put in our seatbelt, you know, there's that little blinker that little beep that always beeps at us like you know put your seatbelt on put your seatbelt on so that's you know so in order to take that away we have to buckle our seatbelt this reminds me of uh pavlov's law <laughs> yeah like the conditioning aspect as bad as it, it seems mm-hmm. it's just like i mean yeah we're 
between positive and negative reinforcement, you're mm-hmm. conditioning someone, especially during childhood. Like, mm-hmm. okay, this is going to reward me. This is going to give me consequences. Yeah. And I mean, it's crazy how that psychology like just sticks with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, but drawing into positive punishment, you know, that can be served as like adding a whooping, putting more chores, adding more, you know, fuel to the fire, maybe with some capital punishment with my mom. I don't like you know? this capital punishment. I don't like it either, but I'm just saying it exists. It exists today. And I mean, I got to address the situation, but, but negative reinforcement for us is like, you're taking something away. So, you know, this, this is, uh, this is more for people outside of, you know, people, uh, people of color, um, where they get their phones taken away mm. or, you know, there's no more TV and no more Xbox or PlayStation. You can't be doing certain things. You know, sometimes you can have where, you know, I take away your freedom to go outside, AKA grounding. Yeah. You know, so that's all these different forms of, of punishment. But I would say, you know, when Amelia gets older you know, or as she's coming of age, of course, I'm be like, Hey, good job. You know, like as simple as just saying good job or like, you know, well done, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. That's a positive, that's a positive thing for the child. And that's kind of like a, a verbal reward. Like, it. it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's encouragement. It's and encouragement. It is, it is yeah. a reward. It's not, yeah. a, it's not a physical one, yeah. but it's something that helps build their spirit and help build their morale. Yeah. I know one thing I struggle with is um, like the negative punishment, essentially, like okay. trying to transition that with a child who has the Internet. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, she could be attached to any type of physical toy that she wants. Um, but ultimately, I feel like a lot of these kids these days just want access to the Internet. And if you if you can find a way to really take that away from them, then you'll have somewhat of a, of a breakthrough. Leverage, yeah. But it's hard. Like eight mm-hmm. hours a day, she's at school where she has access to the Internet as she grows older, like. Yes, I can essentially put her in her room or keep her there all the time, but there's yeah, there's Wi Fi. Every single device has connectivity to something. Uh that's a good observation. I think uh um now that's something that we probably cannot control. But we I, mean, I feel like we have like, to I get mean, away we have I mean, to get ahead of it somehow. We have to get ahead of it somehow. But I mean what I'm what I'm talking about is we don't have control of them like because yeah, Wi Fi, there's devices everywhere, schools, you know. Uh, schools, uh, different computer places, you have home, you know, and I would say just starting off with something personal as like a phone would be a good thing. But of course they can like say, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my laptop, you know, or I'm gonna go ahead and head to school. And yeah. Like, like I need to do some homework. Like yeah, yeah. how do you, how do you punish a child from the internet when they need to do homework? Yeah. I mean, so, you sitting or, unless you're sitting across the, or sitting over their shoulder. Yeah, but luckily we do have some, there are some uh, programs where you can limit their access to certain things. So if you know that the teacher is going to be using these programs for school or for, you know, or for assignments or whatever, then you can just tell the program. You like, really got to get dig, you got to really dig deep in that. I yeah. don't know about you. I grew up in the in area of parental yeah. controls and yes, yeah. they've been more advanced, but mm-hmm. parental controls were not that advanced for, or nothing too complicated for me not to get around. Yeah. I mean, if there is one, like just, uh, if there's one out there, guys, just Yeah, I'm open to all types of resources. Yeah. <laughs> Because, I'm, yeah, the Internet is something hard to, to navigate because mm-hmm. it's so vast and there's so many different ways yeah. to get to it. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to limit. And then once you do limit it, it's like, all right, like my child does not know life without the Internet. Yeah. So I mean, that's taking it completely. Yeah, yeah. Taking it completely away um, completely drains her. Mm hmm. But at times, I mean, she my she also is creative. So it's kind of like, all right, I can sit in this space without the Internet and I can just imagine the Internet. And I don't I I know I struggle as Alexia grew up just trying to discipline her mm-hmm. from an aspect of like our right, negative punishment. Like I'm taking something away from you mm-hmm. because, I mean, the Internet has expanded her creativity level. So she yeah. doesn't necessarily need anything and she'll be perfectly fine. Yeah. What if we did it to where. I know this is going to sound weird, but what if we took away the phone and actually applied like tactile stuff, like so, something okay. tangible? Like you were saying, like she's creative. We can probably say, all right, I'm going to take away your phone, but I want you to draw something for me. Or I want you to express to me in a like in a way how you feel about this type of situation or how you can correct. I don't know. Just No, no. I, like, I think that's a, that's a yeah. good line of thought. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, I've, I've thought about that, too, since you whenever if the negativity or the negative punishment is not yeah. efficient, like you still have to put something 
something else behind it and it doesn't have to be as negative i think like yeah. i said i've been more conditioned to like the more negative it is the harder it's gonna hit yeah but no there is stuff like that where i've had alexia have to like write out what you did type mm-hmm. thing yeah and that is that's um consequence enough for her like they have to yeah. sit down and like write it's not what she wants to write but she knows she has to do it type thing something tangible that i can see and i can bring back up like hey we went over this already you've already gone through this yeah um but yeah it's, i mean it's learning how to how to navigate with this generation z yeah. where taking away stuff doesn't always work for them unless you get to the point where it's the phone and now you're taking away the phone which is their communication device for yeah. most and so you send your child out without a phone if that's something they've become attached to or you yeah. become com- <clears throat> comfortable with that that's how i communicate with you throughout the day yeah yeah, that's something that we probably have to figure out on our own. I think uh, <laughs> I was thinking in my head, like, instead of having a smartphone, we could just have like a flip phone. But then again, it's just like they can probably hack it or they can probably. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. I don't yeah. know if you, you have to bring back one of your old flip phones. I've even flip phones now, flip, flip phones now yeah. still have access to the Internet. Yeah. And then, I mean, a whole nother tangent of that is essentially now you're opening your child up to to more peer pressure bullying type thing Mm -hmm. like we're talking about children like they're not going to be as mentally uh, stable or strong enough to handle the fact of of embarrassment in certain situations right which to tie back to our different forms of punishment that was a different form of punishment for i know for me growing up it's like all right Mm -hmm. you want to act out type thing all right i'm going to keep you in this situation i'm gonna have you in this embarrassing situation yeah so yeah i mean discipline in public type thing discipline yeah um trying to think i had a lot of just uh, public things for for my parents because like that's, that's one, what worked yeah like for one what yeah so public humiliation mm-hmm, yeah right is one where like for instance like if a kid was to act up and i called a parent <clears throat> they would you know say all right i'm gonna be up. like for <laughs> one parent did show up to uh one of my students class and mm-hmm. she was with her the whole t- i like that like that was yeah. like i like that where he's just like okay i'm gonna be with you the whole day i'm gonna have to miss a day at work <laughs> i'm trying not you to know? dip too deep into our traumas but yeah i remember growing <laughs> up with the fear like my parents at any time will show up at the school and they will sit with me because mm-hmm. there were parents who, who would do that and it was yeah. encouraged like yeah. And it's kind of weird. It's like it was openly encouraged to, I guess, in the teacher's mindset to hold your child accountable. Mm-hmm. But I mean, from a child's mindset, it's, it's pretty much it was a green light that your parents can come up here and embarrass mm-hmm. you and beat you in public. I, <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> speaking of, I remember when my dad said like, look, son, if you mess up in class or if you act up in any form of fashion, he, he's not this quiet, by the way. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> but if you mess up in any form of fashion, best believe I'm going to come up there, right? And I'm gonna like uh, pull you to, uh, like pull you in front of the whole class, mm-hmm. right? And I'm just gonna like lay lay that belt on you in front of everybody. Yeah. And and, and I don't care if the principal or the police comes in to come pull I me off. I don't think my child can handle like, that. I was, like, I was like, I'm gonna like I'm gonna get my licks in today because best believe. I had to take a day off of work today yes. to to come and correct you because you you know you can't get your your ish together and you know and now we're gonna miss one day of pay because of your actions. Thank you very much, Zach. Yeah. So with that being said, try me. <laughs> like I said, like, and that comes down like, to that fear. Yeah, yeah it's like because now you <clears throat> even with that situation, that's um, a lot of parents. It I feel I know for my parents, it took a long time for them to realize that you. Um, perpetuate a lot of your your internal feelings and your internal anger onto disciplinary acts. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes the cause and you no know, factor into the means. I think it was just like I'm upset because this this and this happened, and also something else happened completely unrelated. I'm combining the two, and I'm letting I'm releasing it through discipline. Yeah, I'm not saying my parents took joy in discipline, <laughs> but I felt like it was some type of release for them. Yeah, I mean, I can say the release for my for my parents, especially for my dad, it was getting that that whooping. Like he, that was his main re- like resource for everything. <laughs> I mean, he like over time, whenever we got older, you know, he did start like just talking to me one on one or talking to me and my my siblings one on one about our actions. Uh, but in the early stages, yeah, it was always like butt whooping, butt yeah. whooping. But we went for everything and then threatening, threatening, threatening for every single thing that I do. So he was he was aggressive as F, you know, but 
uh yeah i mean it will put the fear of god in you like Mm -hmm. oh snap i'm about to like if i if i do one thing wrong like anything and then you get all paranoid like am i doing this right yeah am i doing this right? especially when things happen with no warning and there's no explanations like all right what did i do wrong we all know like the the yell from downstairs or like the yell across the oh yeah across the house Uh like what did i do yeah oh when they say your whole name too yeah first middle and last they just like (laughs) have you had to pull that with amelia no, I know. So it's early on. But. It's too early right now to tell, but I would say, I mean, I would still call out her name. I mean, I would, honestly, I would just pull it to the side and say, "Hey, um, so what's going on?" <laughs> I mean, Bobby stern about it, like, so, so, I want you to tell me the truth. What's really going on? I know you start talking you know? with her hands, like, huh? <laughs> Bobby. But here's the thing, though. Like, she goes to daycare right now, and every mm-hmm. time she gets in trouble. Uh, of course, the you know the teachers let us know like what did she do? Like the thing that's very common for her is that she bites kids. Oh, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> she bites kids, and I'm and the teacher said it's a common thing at age. I'm like, no, it ain't gonna be yeah, common for it. us. <laughs> it is Won't not be gonna common be, for law. Like you know, and she's like the only black girl in there. Mm. You know, black quote unquote because you know her skin color. But that's besides the point. The thing about it is like, look, you cannot be biting kids. You know, and, you know, the mother would always correct her right there when she picks her up, like, say sorry, that kind of thing. And sometimes it goes to that point where there's incident reports, you know, and then they have to address the parent. I'm like, oh, man, I don't feel like talking to the parent about this. You know, I don't want, you know, Amelia's mom to have to go through all that mess because of Amelia's. So we would, of course, discipline her and, you know, speak to her about like, hey, what did you do wrong? Like, why did you do that? And. You know, you're not supposed to be doing that, you know. And so when we ask her these questions, she's like this. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just but I mean, must- this is prime yeah. time for you. You're about, yeah. to, you're going through, about to go through terrible twos and all that. Hey, I'm ready. I'm so ready. It's so it's setting, setting that standard. So, um, but I just, I for one can say like, for me, I resort to whoopings last. Mm-hmm. Like that is my last thing. My last resort because... I mean, for us, it's been traumatizing. So, I don't, like you said, I don't, don't want, want to continue that cycle. I don't want to continue that cycle. I want to have that conversation because, you know, like I said, generational cycle, you know, it's going to create that or it's going to keep on moving forward and throughout our generation. And I think the best thing to do is just have that conversation way early on in the, in the game. You know, um, I like the fact that um, Amelia's mom, her relatives... Uh, uh, Amelia's mom's uh, aunt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, what she would do with her kids is, um, it's her uh, aunt in in Seattle. She would uh, every Saturday, she would sit down with her kids. You know, no matter what age they were, they would. She, she would sit down with her kids. They would eat breakfast. You know, talk about so how's it going. You know, how's school and everything. And, you know, they would lead off with that very soft. And then eventually they would get to the hard points like, okay, so I understand that we had uh, a situation that occurred this week, Hmm. you know, so what did you guys think about it? Okay, that's very, very open ended. I don't know if I'm that. I mean, I'm not that open yet. I I think I can get there because I like the fact that we're sharing breakfast together. We're having an open conversation, you know, and. In a way, like, and, and as teachers, like, from what the book says that we have to do as teachers is we have to set the rules at the very beginning of the school year. And usually uh, it entails where you would have the students make up the rules for you or you would work it out together. You know, I'm not too comfortable doing that because, you know, I want my classroom to run the way I want it to be. Yeah. You know, I feel like your household should be even more. It like, should be just like exactly that. how I yeah. want it to be. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying like, it's a nice example to have. It's just, you know, different strokes for different folks and Definitely. different families. It just depends on your, your whole stamina on your, on your, on your, on your parenting. Yeah, but, but that sounds like it would be exhausting. Yeah. I got to wait to to Saturday. No, I mean, you don't have to wait till Saturday. You could like, I was just saying like, uh, I mean, I'm more direct. Like, yeah. All right. I, this is, I saw this happen. Uh-huh. We're going to, we're going to handle this right now. <laughs> it doesn't have to be as aggressive, but it's like, yeah. I'm a, I'm a stern, I'm stern for the look. Mm-hmm. I hit you with the look already. Oh, the look. The, the stare the at mama death. Look. Like yeah. was, 
what do you think is about to happen right now? Yeah, I like um, that look. But I'm like, Lex is older, so I've gone through a lot of that. I mean, but it started off in the terrible twos. Like, you, yeah. every parent needs to establish that look that your child knows that it's not it's not a game right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we have something that we need to talk about. So I have yeah. changed from, like, the look, because, like, we all had to look growing up type thing, but the look mm-hmm. also was followed by, like, physical. Like, all right, yeah. Yeah. something about to happen. But it's also like, all right, I've gotten, you know, you, you get down to your child's eye level, and it's like, all mm-hmm. right, we do we need to have a talk like do we need to step outside or do see we and that's that's where i kind of disagree with you on getting on like eye level with um getting on eye level with uh with your child because really? and here's the thing is that if you go eye level with your child and you say do we need to have a conversation that kind of entails like you know like like when I say getting on eye level, like not bending over and looking at them, like literally like yeah, crouching like, down about, yeah, and I'll having a conversation down. because. Uh, and studies, it says that like, if you're even with your child, like as far as height is concerned, that shows that both you guys are equal. I know that's psychologically speaking, but, but if you were to stand, like if you were to have like, look down at your child and your child's looking up at you, then that comes off as like, oh, he's domineering or like, he's, uh, he's, he's the authoritative person. So I think for me, like granted, like she's only two, but for me, I'm like, I'm still like, I think I'm going to uh, do the tactic of just looking down at my child. Like, do we need to have a conversation about this? You know, not crouching mm-hmm. down. Like, that's just, that's just how I would do things because that way, like, you're not speaking at an e- equal plane. You're, you know, you're speaking down and she's, that she's speaking up. And so that comes off as authoritative. So you're like, no, this is what you're going to do. And this is how you're going to do it. No, I'm just giving an example, but you know, and of course, if the, if the kid like rebels or, you know, if there's some camaraderie, like, nope, I'm the parent here. It's because, you know, it's like, why do I have to do that? Because I said, so, you know, you don't have to, like, I don't think a parent doesn't really have to explain why they should do this. Oh, really? It should just be more, I mean, if you want to go down that route, that's fine. But then that gives an open gap for your kid to just jump in and be like, but, but, t- you know, but like, why, like, why can't I do this? If somebody does that, that or something like that. I think the initial explanation yeah. is, is necessary. Yeah. Growing up, <clears throat> never but, getting an explanation. Yeah. Didn't cause me to have any reason to, to fix it. Cause I didn't know what the true issue was. Yeah. So having somewhat of an explanation to say, okay, well, this is what you did wrong and this is why I don't appreciate it type thing. Yeah. Or like, this is what you could have done type yeah. thing. Yeah. I'm just saying like, if the kid is argumentative, you know, I mean, granted, yes, we will be doing that. I, I think I, I want to do that where like at the very beginning, like we're always being proactive and we are establishing the fact that uh, this is what you need to do. And this is the, you know, this is right. And this is wrong. Right. That's, that's already a given. Right. But if the action continues or if it's like, you know, another offense of some sort, that's whenever I implement, like, I'm going to stand above you. Like, do we need to have a conversation about this? Right. And if they're argumentative, I'm like, Nope, what I say goes like, that's it, you know? So, and, um, because you are the parent, because if you're that open, like going back to Amelia's mom's aunt, mm-hmm. If you're that open, then that opens the playing field for what is, I mean, it, it, it can either go both ways. Like I said, different strokes are different folks, but you're just opening up more, more loopholes for the kid to jump into. That's, you know, more, more of a way for them to test your gangsta as, as a millions, as a million. I mean, I can, says, I can so. definitely see, see the opportunity. I, yeah. but I think it is establishing your dominance and not necessarily being such a, in a domineering way type thing. Like yeah. I, even when you were saying like looking down at your child, yeah. like I understand like there is a dominance. Underst- yeah, I'll be understanding on certain occasions, but but going back to like crouching down and being even with your kid, nah, nah, I'm 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 gonna be uh, right above you. Like whenever we have a conversation, hmm. you know. Yeah, like I, said, I mean, it's, I mean, I I can see it. To me, it's, it's coming down. Your, I'm coming down to your level so I can I can understand. Also, I can have that face to face concept. Yeah. Like I'm I'm right here. Yeah, no, like, I understand. It's, you it's, from... it's me and you. We we <laughs> we need to handle this right now. Nah, and I understand. There's nothing from... in between us. It's yeah. me right in front of your face. Yeah, and nah. then I'm going right back up to my position, and I'm under. <laughs> hopefully, we've come to understanding at this point <laughs> that we don't. You don't want me to be that close to your face. No, nah, I'm be. I'm just understand that. <laughs> like, I'm be in your face from 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 up top. Like, you know, death from above kind of thing. Like, I'm like. So how does that we, work? Like, I'm, like we I'm, can, I'm, like we can still have a conversation. Like. 
Not what if she's not paying you any attention? How she? How do you do that from afar? So you, you, you get the Death Star. She turns. She turns around. That's that's a good point. Yeah, but I mean. <laughs> Nah, nah, like we we're like, not having it at all. No, we're gonna have this conversation. I don't care what you say. We're gonna have an open conversation about this one way or another. But but I see what you're saying. I'm just saying that for me, like, you know, I, this is just a study based upon what I heard. So I haven't reached that point just yet. But as of right now, that's what I'm doing. No, I can like, see yeah. it both ways. Yeah, I, I, I want to make ways. sure. I don't. I don't want it to come off like, hey, like, cause, cause we talked about in the earlier, earlier, yeah. like, if you have that that true friend relationship, I'm not coming yeah. down as a friend. I'm yeah. coming down to now, say, look will, at me. Yeah. I'm looking at you. Yeah. We have an issue right now, and we need to fix this right now. Now, let's just say, for instance, like we have it to where, like, um, I don't know, like, let's say, for instance, like, uh, uh somebody hurt Amelia, right? Or something bad happened, like nothing that she can control, right? It's just like something bad that happened to Amelia. Then I'll be like, all right, I'm going to like crouch down, come to your love, like, are you okay? Okay, so like, it's kind of like kind your of compassion level. Yeah, that's my compassion level. But whenever it comes to disciplinary, I'm standing straight up, like straight up looking down at you. That's how I handle things. Okay. Yeah. No, I can, I can definitely rock with that. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, this is just ours, of course. I mean, open to hear anybody else's style when it comes to that direct um, direct communication and de- direct reaction to, to issues, mm-hmm. to disciplinary actions, essentially. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, to me, that <clears throat> that puts a better resolve than just the immediate, like, reactionary smack or the reactionary just yeah. hit. Yeah. And it's like, all right, there's just some level of... Um, gap in between our reaction it says hey let's sit down or let's analyze this out before i react or so do something yeah. crazy yeah because i mean kids are going like you said kids are always going to push you every day so it is it's hard to stop that second nature like all right this is a child and put a child in a child's place and yeah. that's that is hard but I think, I mean, I think both of our methods are, are yeah. sufficient and we would also have to be adaptive with it. Like, yeah, as the movie gets older, those those stares and those conversations might not work. Mm-hmm. Alexia has pushed that button. Yeah. Uh, Especially lying when like, is roll- hard. Yeah. <laughs> lying is so tough. Trying to. What do you mean by lying? Like you like lying dealing, or... dealing okay. with the child who, who you know, who's going to push the truth type thing or, you know, yeah. alter the truth type thing. Yeah. Where it's not something immediate like, okay, you did something wrong. I have the proof here and you're going to get immediate consequence. Mm-hmm. It's just like white lies are like altering stories. And that's where I was, normally uh, growing up, it's like, all right, the parent don't have to believe your story or not. They're going to go off of their truth. Yeah. Uh, but trying to be more progressive and allowing her to express herself, but also be like, hey, I know you're wrong yeah. and we're not about to go back and forth. Yeah. So to kind of like uh, <clears throat> pretty much not explain yourself, but you want to explain yourself. Yeah. That's always been a weird line for me. Cause like, I don't want to be so reactionary. It's like, I just don't believe you. I don't, I don't trust yeah. you right now. Mm-hmm. So consequence, no, let's, let's have a, con- explain yourself. Yeah. I explain to you where you're wrong and that's the end of discussion. Yeah. But like, we at least got to have that so- dialogue. Sometimes I like to, I want to snoop, like get both sides of the coin just so I can understand like, uh, okay, because as parents, we have the tendency of like saying, oh, no, you're wrong. And here's the consequence. Yeah, that's it. You know, but I think as a parent, we should get a better understanding of what else happened. Like, how did you arrive to the situation? Is there somebody else involved? Is there a witness? You know, I'm not sounding like a detective, (laughs) but I'm just saying that like uh, a case This is like a case. (laughs) But I'm just saying that. How did you arrive to this situation? Sometimes I have to snoop a little bit. I have to dig a little deeper on how did you get to this bad behavior? What is the root of it all? Yeah, I love you know, logic-based so, reasoning yeah. with, with Alexia. Yeah. Uh, just Even just being deductive. Like, all right, yeah. here's where we started with. Based off the information you told me, Yeah. this is where uh, the reasonable, logical conclusion is. And that's not where you were at. So yeah. something is wrong. Yeah. And I, and, and I hate to say this, but um, sometimes... It could be like you have to be uh, emotionally uh, uh, thoughtful of of your actions, you know, Mm -hmm. so because we don't know every single thing. Like we'll probably know about what, 96 percent of all like of our kids stuff until they get a little bit older. I I give that lower than that. What like kids are gone eight hours of the day. That's true. So, I mean, you're going to know 
majority of it, but it's just. I mean, it depends on your level with your child. But even still, yeah. I feel like there's a there's a strong level of we send our kids out to be conditioned by school. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're in a school for eight hours a day. And then it's a part of like, all right, we do the rest. And that that balance can be very offset. So I mean, you yeah. get to see a lot. I'm pretty sure you see a lot of stuff in your students that their parents will never see. Oh yeah. So that's I see that's the reality. We send yeah. our kids out for a lot of times. So there's a there's an aspect of them that they're still developing, and school might be their trial and error. Like school is where growing up, you kind of feel yourself and like, all right. I mean, essentially, that's see what school is for. Yeah. yeah, that's what it's for. So, for but I mean, you're saying little. like getting to know or knowing your child type thing is like I give it maybe like seventy percent. Yeah. Okay. I could roll with that. I could roll with that. I think, you know, as parents, we shouldn't, and, you know, like I said, I, I work at a Title I school, and I see this all the time, and I hate this. And, I, yeah, I said hate. I hate it when, you know, uh, parents get so angry and so upset with their child that they resort to fighting, you know, or, like, physical altercations where... Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, like, where you're punching your kid... Because they did like did something wrong, like why'd you spill that milk? I mean, that's oh, in the face, you <laughs> know, going like, back to your corporal punishment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, why do you want to punch a kid? You know, and then also, you know, uh, which I faced a lot is you know verbal abuse, where you're just saying like, you know, you're not you're not worth anything, you're nothing, you know, you're worthless to this world, like, or calling them out of their name, like name calling kind of thing, like that is something that is not supposed to, you know. Like parents in general are supposed to be uplifting. We're supposed to be guidance. We're supposed to be uh, there for the child when we, you know, when they need us the most. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, we're not your friends. We are your parents. Understand the difference, okay? We are, we are not your friends. We are your parents. So we must understand that. I know I'm, I'm, I'm going back and forth, but you must understand the difference. You know. So with that being said, uh, don't physically hit your kid like in by, public by, by yeah in public <laughs> or punch them or kicking them or doing some type nah, of like nah, physical, Bruce Lee karate I mean, move these nah. all sound like abusive <laughs> yeah abusive acts yeah but i mean i guess we can talk about drawing where is that line get drawn like spankings were in i would feel like the way that we got spanked and we got whooped in today's day and age would be classified as abuse mm-hmm uh, you can't necessarily do that anymore. Like I said, too much access, too much yeah. freedom. Yeah. Uh, things get reported. Yeah. Um, so where, where do you draw that line at? Like, where do you feel like the furthest you can go to... Well, I mean, just when it comes down to punishing physically. Because, I mean, we, <clears throat> we've talked about different avenues of, like, not being physical. Yeah. But there is still, like I said from the beginning, there's, a, there's the, an aspect of yeah. physicality that, all right. Yeah. At some point... I, I can yeah, I can either go with the fear that I will do it, or at some point I will do it. Yeah. So it's a spanking, it's a slap on the wrist. Yeah. Uh, a pop in the mouth, a yeah. pop in the forehead. Yeah. Where I mean, did, where does that line get the drawn? The great thing about spanking, <laughs> as as weird as it sounds, is that it's a quick and easy disciplinary tool. Like we can easily just like pop. That's wrong. Don't do it again because that associate you know that one painful moment. Uh, associates to that one bad behavior which in return says like okay don't do that anymore right um and then yeah there are some long-term results right and that's because of that whole fear of punishment but your question was what again is that i, was, I mean for you personally like, where where do you draw your lines at to where um it's it's still disciplinary action versus like abuse like abuse. what's what's going too far i think for me, like where I would draw the line is like, I mean, spankings, but I would set the number like, all right, like because of your actions, you get like five. Li- but I mean, it's just <laughs> so but- you spanking by the letter, <laughs> spanking by the letter. <laughs> like, since your name is Amelia, we're yeah. gonna have to spank you this number of times. No, 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 no. I think, like, uh, like I think for me, since try to have that conversation first before anything else. You know, start off easy. I know we've been repeating ourselves on that part, but start off with the conversation and then reinforce that with the conversation again if the action happens. And then if it happens again, then yeah, then a spanking. But I would never, never punch my kid or, you know, verbally abuse them. Like, I like that's the line where I will never cross is uh, or just or just straight up abandoning them altogether. 
you know because oh, i mean it's like, extreme i know because like there's some kids parents, beyond punishment yeah. at that point <laughs> like where what i mean by that is like saying like not talking to you because there are like um especially in the asian community like whenever you're in trouble like oh like the dishonor yeah like <laughs> You are dishonorable, like dishonorable to the family. So I'm no longer going to speak to you for these amount of days. Right. So and that's just another form of, of punishment. Yeah. You know, and that right. Th- you know, and that goes back to what you were saying. Like, you're not saying anything to me. I don't know what to correct. I don't know what to what to change, you know, so I can, you know, uh, be a better you know child to you. Yeah. That kind of thing. So it's it's good to just. Like I said, just having a conversation. Like spankings, last resort of all things. But don't overdo it to where it's like, I'm gonna spank you tomorrow. Like I'm gonna spank you right now. You know? Yeah. Like I mean, I would give fair warning to my kid. Um, like, all right, if you're not, if you don't correct your act, like for instance, like you know, temper tension tantrums all the time as a two year old, you're gonna face it, right? I'm like, uh, if you don't correct your behavior by the time I reach five. You know, then you're going to get a spanking. Right. And it's just like one tap on the thigh and that's it, you know. And um, and then, of course, you know, I count it down and all that other kinds of stuff. And I'm like, all right, here we go. And then I'm like, you want another one? Like, you know, it's just one tap, like real quick, (laughs) like Like one hard tap and that's it. So um, but I, I try to give them a chance to correct themselves. So you have to give them that chance, you know. That's the whole purpose of this discipline is like, okay, let's see if they can actually change themselves. Then they don't. Then, yeah. Then we go ahead and move on to our consequences. No, I mean, I definitely I definitely agree. I think when it comes to like drawing those limits and drawing those lines to make sure you aren't overdoing it when it comes to discipline. Yeah. Like for me, I know I can't discipline um, in the heat of the moment. Yeah. Because I know to me, that's that's a trigger. Like I know how my parents were and I've seen other people when you discipline yeah. in the heat of the moment you're you're amplified up yep and you got to realize you're dealing with a child and you're just going based off of impulse you're yeah, like I'm just gonna impulse. Yep. Yep. so it's more of like all right we had this conversation you will get a disciplinary action later so yes it does allow some room for grace type thing for me to kind of soften my heart at times but I just know I can't do it in the at in the in the heat of the moment yeah I I can agree with you uh to a certain extent on that because I feel that if you don't handle it at the heat of the moment, either A, you will probably forget it. Like, you know, and you say, I'm going to go ahead and do it later. We're going to discipline when you get home. Oh, it's not much later. I know. Well, <laughs> how, how late are we talking? Like, no, it's just, I mean, like I said, it's to avoid the impulse reaction. Oh, okay. Like, you just, like, settle down a little yeah. bit so I can get my mind right. Definitely. Because if I don't settle down, I'm going to do something that I'm going to regret later exactly. on. Yeah. Like I said, we have, we have little, we have girls. Yeah. That uh, I can granted, I mean, I don't yeah. want to create a double standard for, for boys if we have, no. Or young men, essentially, because just because they're a man or a boy that they get a tougher consequence. Now, I don't want to say that, but really, like, I I never like the fact of consequences being so reactionary and not necessarily getting the clarity for it. Mm-hmm. So it's just like automatically, like, okay, I did something wrong, allegedly. Yeah. Pain. Yeah. No, like, I need something to register. I need that conversation to be had. And then also, there's a time and place for this type of thing. Like, yeah where the consequence is still going to come, but I want it to be, to be fair and to be justified. Yeah. To kind of alleviate the, I don't know, maybe the overarching fear of it. Yeah. Like, all right, I I can understand that I did something wrong or my father believes that I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. So there is going to be a consequence for this. Yeah. And it might be physical. Yeah. One thing that I fear is, yeah, disciplining in public for sure. <laughs> you know, us being African American, <clears throat> it's uh, it can be difficult because you know we fall under that stereotype of being so aggressive and physical with our child that you know somebody has to call the popo on us because we're trying to discipline our child. Yeah, you know, so it's just we're always, we you know, the moment like something happens. You know, I think the kid was like, oh, I could, I get to go ahead and act up in public right here, right now. My parents aren't going to do nothing about it. <laughs> you know, so we have to be like, OK, are we going to whoop our kid right here, right now in front of everybody? Or are we going to like pull him to the side, into the bathroom? I'm glad you said like we. So how yeah. does that work? Like for you, do you and uh, and Amelia's mother, like, do you do you have talks about discipline? We do have talks about discipline. Um, and uh, we just... We just, well, I mean, this is from my own personal experience where uh, whenever we take Amelia to 
I don't know, like a playground or something like that. And she mm-hmm. starts acting up. We already have something in play. Like we already have something like, all right, this is what we're going to do if yeah. she acts up. You know, I try to be as hands on as possible, you know. So, uh, for instance, like if Amelia is acting up like in public, I don't spank her on the spot. You know, I just pull her like I literally like pull her out of whatever environment we're mm-hmm. at. And then it's just isolation. You know, isolate her where it's just you and me. And then we have a conversation about your behavior, right? And usually I give her time to cool off and let her, you know, like, be like, throw whatever you need to throw off, right? Yeah. And then once you come down, let's talk some more. Let's talk some more, you know? Sometimes I'm... Like, you know, I usually take her to the bathroom or I take her to the car or, you know, just in a different room or something like that. And I just let her do her thing. It's usually like, yeah, like between like 30 seconds to like five minutes. Just depends on the situation. Have there ever been any instances where where y'all have not been on the same accord with discipline? (sighs) Not that I know of so far. Um, It's still a work in progress on certain things. But I think for me, it's like I'm more I'm more tuned into spanking than mm-hmm. anything else like i i mean that's just the way we were raised is like i'm more resortful to spanking because it's the quickest thing to do right but uh for Amelia's mom she's like no nah, i would not do that to amelia because it's it's you know it's daunting to her it's gonna affect her in some form or fashion yeah. so uh we've been on we've been uh in disagreement on that a couple times but now i'm like i understand where she's coming from on that aspect because yeah, she is a girl and uh, they're more emotional creatures than, you know, being more, Ooh. I'm just saying like they're a little <laughs> bit more emotional. So I can't, I can't, you know, I can't be too aggressive. Then it's just, then I'm going to be double that, standards. I'm, we'll talk about that <laughs> later on, but I'm just saying that I don't want to, I don't want to be that dad who's on the five o'clock news because the viral video popped out because of my actions you know i i you know i mean who's to say what happened with a son or a daughter that's I was true. playing devil's advocate with it yeah but i mean i think this just bring it on the topic of essentially of dis, different disciplinary styles and how does that work when when co-parenting a child or you know having separate households and also just a whole nother aspect of like your your parents your mm. or, you know your child's grandparents and how they mm. parent and how they uh discipline their child like all that in the mix it can be a very convoluted yeah style like what- yeah i was gonna ask you like how being that you are you know like you and uh Ale- lexi's mom are like two yeah. separate households right and you know you parent one way and she parents that how, like how do y'all deal with that whenever you're trying to you know mold Lexi into a certain way, you know, like yeah. as far as discipline. So like I said, this is this is very vital for a lot of single parents because I mean your your time isn't together for a lot of time. So yeah. um, a lot of it is reactionary, essentially not with Alexia being reactionary. It's more like, all right, I see how you are disciplined over there, so I need to figure out what I can do to balance that out. Yeah. So I don't. Um, I mean, I guess there's two different ways to go about it. Ideally, if you're cordial and you agree with it, then yes, y'all can do the same thing. Y'all can be on the same level that, okay, this is what we agree we're going to do and we're never going to cross these lines. But if you're not, it is a a push and pull that, okay, you do this and I want to make sure Lexi's getting both sides of like discipline and she understands like the good and the bad of it. Yeah. Um, So I don't want it to to be one sided in certain aspects. So like sometimes like her mother will... um, well, like we'll both we both agree with having conversations with Alexia, but sometimes the conversation ends with like on a lighter note that okay, no, we we work through the situation, but her mother will sometimes take like ownership of it. Like I understand, like I made a mistake type thing. I'm more stern because it's more of like all right, I even if I do make a mistake, it's like I want you to understand that we're having this conversation, but I'm setting a level of of standard for you. That mm-hmm. you're still developing. Yeah. So I want you to take this to heart that this is kind of what needs to change. Yeah. Um, and this is it's a weird balance type thing between between the two. And then uh, like I said, the whole nother level of like grandparents. I don't know. My parents don't necessarily even go to that level of discipline. Yeah. Which is a complete one eighty opposite of us. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so weird being in that household sometimes and to see, okay, like the things that I would have never got away with. 
Now now she's the getting grandchild yeah. just has uh, free form to to do as she's she pleases. But I mean, like I said, it's breaking those cycles. Yeah, we had a lot of conversations. I know me and my family had a lot of conversations of okay, this is kind of how this affected us. Mm-hmm. So I can see how yes, we don't want to continue that cycle again. So we're going to try something different. Question for you: Do you think that it would be um, helpful if like your parents were to tell you how to parent your child or discipline your child? Like, do you? Do you take I think it with a grain of salt? Enough. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, I mean, I'm just saying, like, or if or you, you mean like like aggressively, like step in type thing? Yeah, like when you gonna step in, just or like you know, like uh, I think this would be better, Justin, if you were to do this instead of that, that kind of thing. Like, how would you? How do you take that? Like, would you? I mean, I think with any type of advice, you you take it sometimes with a grain of salt type thing. Like, mm-hmm. it's what you. It depends on your level. So of, even if like, I'm sorry to cut you off, yeah, but even if it was just like a random person, like you know, who who's also a parent as well. Like, how would you take that as well? Depends like, on the level of influence. Random people, for me, don't have much level of influence to me. I don't know you. You don't know me. You don't know, yeah. our, you know our situation. So, cool. I get it. It's like reading a book type thing. Um, but, like, with your parents and people who are close to you, I I do take it into a strong consideration to kind of see what the, what their intent behind it is. Like, my parents have no ill intent yeah. uh, between me or their grandchild. So, like, they have... Um, they have good nature towards it, but it's also understanding your child. The same things that they want out there, the relationship that they have with your child has to with their grandparents doesn't necessarily have to be indicative of how you parent your child. Those are two separate lanes. Like your grandparents are your grandparents. Yeah. And also, I mean, your grandparents aren't necessarily, they're assisting with developing your child, but they're not raising your child. At the end of the day, your child comes back to you Uh and you have to have your, your set boundaries and your set standards that your child understands that, Mm -hmm. This is how I'm being raised. My grandparents might be a lighter area or might yeah. be stricter in some aspects, but I'm coming back home and this is how my parents want me to grow up to be. Okay. What if, and I'm, I'm just spitballing here, but what if um, you have somebody who is taking care of your child while you're out? Would you allow them to like, discipline them like for yeah, instance this, like this, a is whooping. Was, this is where it gets it that's gets the part that i was gonna yeah. ask is like you know would you, I mean, this is for both of us but i'm saying like would you allow that person to discipline your child uh, this comes down to really establishing you gotta have those conversations up front because yeah. ideally yes i would say if anyone i trust to to be yeah. around my child like would your best understand. friend or something yeah, yeah. like yeah like my brothers, I would un- they would have that level of understanding to know, like this is where Justin will take it, and I'm not gonna going to surpass him. And also, it's a mutual respect. Mm-hmm. But anytime you do put your child under any other type of of leadership or um, guardianship, you are opening up to any type of form of discipline that they choose to do. Uh, and we've all heard stories of babysitters who've taken it too far, Ooh, uh, yeah. and it's just like. How it really depends on how do you handle it after that. Like, yeah. you still got you got to have a conversation with your child at that point, and now you got to rectify things with whoever you place your child uh, yeah. under their care with. Yeah, I think for me, like, even if whether if we're going out in public or whether if I'm gonna drop you off with somebody to watch you, or you know, or just just anything, like I would, <laughs> I would give them that talk before we go into any place restaurants public places if we're meeting somebody or if i'm dropping off with somebody we're gonna have that talk and the talk goes a little something like this you are going to behave yeah (laughs) (laughs) and you are going to follow the rules and regulations set i mean not like that but i'm saying you are going (laughs) to follow the rules if you don't follow the rules best believe i mean i'm putting the fear like best believe like we're gonna have, we're gonna have a talk. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have a comment. Like come you know, down to the house. The house will like, still apply. I don't want to hear anything from you. Yeah. Like like if we're going to a grocery store, like I don't want I don't want to hear you say it to me like I want this or I want that or whatever like that. Like you know establishing the house rules. Exactly. The house will still apply in public. Yeah. So don't think for one minute that once we step out this house that you can act a fool because it ain't gonna happen with me. So. The moment it's like, so the moment that happens, then yeah, we're going to have some issues coming back home. Like, you know, we're going to, so, and I would say, you know, going back to like what Gandhi said, treat others the way you want to be treated. Like if you like, and I tell this to my kids, like if there's a substitute teacher 
right? That's taking care of you while I'm gone. Don't act a fool. Like, I don't care if like they are the worst substitute teacher where they're yelling at you constantly or if they're that teacher that's just like sitting back and sleeping during the job. You know, you treat them with respect, you know, because they don't know you, you don't know them. And quite honestly, it's unfair for them, you know, and for me. And it it looks bad on me as a parent that like if or a teacher that if you act up, then I did something wrong. You know, I am the one who is at fault. It always comes back to me, you know, or to Amelia's mom. Yeah. So don't be that person. Or else I will be that person. <laughs> so Oh yeah, all about that fear. All about that fear. I mean, I'm like, it's good to place fear, but just it has to from, be a healthy fear. It has to be a healthy fear. It comes from a place of love, not yes. from a place from hate. So, you know, uh, so I just want to place on you like this is so fear in some form or fashion, actually it is, it is our consequence. It is what is going to happen. Because like I can't come at you and be like, oh come on, Amelia. Like you know, like just don't. I, I can't <laughs> laugh with you about this kind of thing because it's serious, you know. So, uh, like that's one of the issues that I face as a person. Is like, yeah, I do. Like whenever there's some type of issue, I kind of just like laugh it off and like make light of the situation. But but I can't do that with my kid. Mm-hmm. Like I have to be stern. I have to like you know. There are some places you have to build up these internal yeah. disciplines. Yeah, I know we've been talking about int- discipline as like a physical thing. Yeah, or like consequence. But it's also it's a it's a conditioning internally. So you're yeah. building up these disciplines within our house rules, so that you teach your child how to act and how to maneuver and how to behave. Yeah, in, in any type of situation that they're prepared for the real world, the real world, and it starts inside the house. Mm-hmm. And that's what all these are, are for, all these disciplines that we talked about in the different avenues and different um, methods that we discussed. All those are really to build up the internal disciplines in, in, in our children that they know how to behave and function in society successfully. Yeah. yeah. So with that being said, uh, to, to wrap this whole thing up. Uh, so what did y'all think? Like uh, for me overall, I think we should talk to our kids straight and direct. No BS whatsoever. Uh, they're human beings. They need structure. So they are going to test you as parents, but I think uh, they're just looking for some type of structure. So place that in there already in your household. Do you agree, Justin? Definitely. Like, like yeah, I said, so, it's, it's all about structure. Exactly. So are you with whoopings or like, are you pro whooping where I'm going to beat you until you get your stuff together? I think we, we end up drawing like a, a gray area. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we explain it with enough context. Exactly. So people can, can understand. So there are other forms of discipline. You can, however you want to take it is completely up to you as a parent and as a father, right? Just How progressive with it. Yeah. Just stir like firm, but fair is what they say. Okay. Firm, yeah. but fair, you know? So, um, um, and overall, like how can we improve our child discipline and not resort to means of physical abuse or mm-hmm. physical action, you know, without even touching the kid, we're just like, how can we discipline them all together without going to that? So that's a little food for thought for you guys. But other than that, guys, that is our show for today. Yes. We'd yes. love to hear any feedback from, from our suggestions and also any resources, you know, where people can find more information or just uh, read more about kind of different avenues. Like I said, we're trying to be more progressive and open up the doors so that we can stop these generational cycles. Mm-hmm. Um, so please give us your feedback. Also, don't forget to follow us on all social mediums. Yes, sir. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can listen to us on SoundCloud, also on YouTube. Share it, repost it, like it with your friends. And until next time, thank you for listening to our show. So we'll catch you next time. So until then, <laughs> stay dedicated. dedicated.